Wicked, 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 wicked. Wicked tones, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I just want to do a lot of videos we do on back and chest, everything, legs. All of them, we're talking about movement and how we're putting our hands or where we're pulling from, or chest lifting or whatever it might be, just different cues. But like the most basic cue I think people are missing is the fact that like when you're trying to lock, trying to set a weight on muscle or you're trying to get moving on muscle and not pin on joint so much, this fucking seat won't stop. Um, it's like, I don't want to start the idea isn't like if I'm going to do leg extension here with one leg, I don't want to start on the stack. So the stack is dead weight, right? I don't want to start off dead weight and then catch my quad necessarily. Some people can, the more experienced you are, you just understand that your tension is in your shin. My shin is connected to this pad. So therefore this is all one piece moving. It's not my leg moving into a pad and kicking it up to the ceiling. Like people see, it's almost like they're fucking leave it. You'll see when people kick too hard, they'll do this. And they see this hesitation at the top, like never happens that crazy where this leaves your shin. But it's like you're trying, that's what they're thinking that they're doing is launching this fucking pad up to the ceiling, right? But the idea is to create a connection. So even if we have like a heavy weight on here, we have 40 pounds, say we have 120, whatever it is for you monsters out there. So it's like, I wanna understand that I can push out. So even here, I've just pushed off an inch. Like I'm not on the stack anymore. I've pushed out and locked on my quad. So I'm literally an inch off the stack, not even. I put pressure into this, into this shin pad. This pressure on my shin is now holding my quad active. In the sense that now when I go to move, I can rock off here and I can feel my quad engaging and I can roll through. So I'm always aware of the tension on my shin. That tension pulls me under. I scribe through that tension to squeeze up through my quad. So I'm always connected to the pad. It's like we made that video a while ago where I joked about how when you wrap your hand on something, it should be like an avatar when they take their braid and connect to the beast or the whatever thing they're riding, right? It's like I'm connecting now to my weight and engaging on the muscle I want to be on. So I'm not tense everywhere. I'm not, my hips not up. I'm not like squeezing my butt. A lot of people do that. They'll get like some heavy weight on there. See, so it's like a hundred. Pretend it's 100 because I'm not doing 100. So they'll, they'll bit themselves here and then you see as soon as they get going, this happens. They raise up. So they raise up to get leverage on the pad below. So there's very little weight on the pad. It's this kick out through my leg. And I'm just kicking through my leg. It's like, no, just be dead in the leg. So I'm mushed into the leg. It's like I'm molded to the pad and I'm pushing out on my quad now. So I'm trapped now. So I can rock here even and hold control that we even if it's 200 pounds, I can do this and I can just move through. Whether you choose to slide in, you choose to lean out, you choose to sit up tall, it doesn't matter. We're just staying connected on quad from the start, right? So that whole way of thinking carries over into a lot of different, we could pick machines at random in the sense that like, I'm gonna, let's put it on here. On back, it's even, it's a little different because I'm back, obviously we, we need to understand how to set our shoulders, right? So a lot of people will, they'll wanna get maximum stretch, which is a good idea, especially if you're trying to develop whole back. So you'll see these guys who post up here and they're, they get set and they'll hump in closer and closer. As we know, like I preach keeping your hip back, right? So what I wanna do here is I don't wanna, when I pick this weight up, my pressure and my force is in my chest pad. My arm never bends or grabs. I just lock my hands on and I sit into my chest pad. So even here, I'm too overextended to be able to get my chest up and roll back. I have to set my shoulders down and elbows down. So I've retracted my shoulders and set my scapula a little bit. I'm not like locked down. I'm just set down enough to set into my lat to feel pressure on my elbow that's keeping my lat engaged. So I'm cracked just like I was there, how we crack and catch on the quad. I'm here, I'm catching on my back now. So I'm engaged in my back and I can rock through there and then pull through my back. So it's not this pulling or being here and pulling or as tight as I can. I wanna lock into the area of my back. I wanna get, I wanna engage my lats and mid back and I wanna rock through my hands and rock out. 
So I understand that my shoulder can retract. So I said it retracted about halfway because this would be full. So I set it here, I rock out, and then I roll full. Up through. So I'm engaging on the body part that I want to hit with purpose. So if I was to do this higher, we can't really do it higher here, but if I intentionally wanted to hit upper back, I would almost, if this handle was different, I would have my elbows up and I would set here and I would pull up into upper. And I would set my shoulders back and I would rock and pull upper. Still keeping a, a lot of weight on this pad. So the fact that we can keep weight on this pad allows us to dictate how easily we can pull something because we have leverage because the force that's going forward is being caught here. And I'm driving the force there into here. Oh, so it's not a body pull, it's a, it's a body movement since I'm moving off this pad. If there was nothing in my hand, I'd do this. I'd literally fall back, but I'm driving through and I have a weight in my hand, so it keeps me stuck because I'm being forced up instead of back, right? So it's the same idea here. People don't have row machines. I did a, we did a video on how you retract your shoulder in a dumbbell row. You don't let it hang, set here, and then start moving through your lat, right? So it's the same thing here just to understand catching on the body part. If I'm gonna grab on here and hold on lat, so again, my arm is too extended right now for me to get my chest up. I'm gonna end up doing this, pulling up into like outer, outer lat rhomboids. So what I wanna do is I wanna pin this elbow down and put my chest up to lock my arm in this position. So my chest is in line with my chest. I mean, my chest is in line with my shoulder. It's not sunken behind it. So as you can see, you can only see my shoulder now. I roll up till my chest is even with it and tuck my elbow in. So now I'm locked on lack as elbows low, not open, low. So when I drive up through, I'm just breaking that elbow straight up and leaning through. But if I don't set in tension and lock into my lat right away, I'll never be able to find it. I'll be too extended, right? So we have to find our lat right off the start and then start moving on our lat. Yeah, but the dumbbell is obviously a different angle. We did it in another video. Go watch the other video. Yeah, so in this, we've dealt this on chest as well. It's just understanding catching, like we've been saying on everything else here, catching and putting on the muscle that we're trying to hit, right? So if we're on here, ooh, I want to be relaxed. Everyone lays down and they put their hands on here and they get as tense as they can. They get this like fucking a Viagra in their neck, fucking rock hard. Like, uh, like they don't know, they don't understand. Like you can just put your head forward and it relaxes your whole upper body. This is not a relaxed position. Even if you're not a big, big individual, this is not comfortable. Putting my hands like this, right? So if I'm gonna roll up here and I'm gonna chest up, I wanna create this drop already in my shoulders and catch right here. So I'm literally caught on peck right here, hands. I can rock and move. So there's no violent jerk out of the bottom. There's no fucking uh, and this shit, like punching this fucking thing. The weight is sitting on my palm already and I'm engaged in my lats. And all I'm doing is pressing backwards and extending. Whether there's four plates on there or one plate on there, I'm rocking. For guys with shoulder problems, this is a good machine because you can set the depth. I don't have to force myself deeper than I want to go, right? So if I tuck here, I'm an inch off the stack, I'm rocking. Even if it gets heavy, I can't handle the drop that much, I'm gonna tap. I can catch again, push. We always wanna feel like we're, like we're catching that inch off and then able to rock in this range. Even if my hand's here, I'm out wide. I'm gonna catch, I'm gonna let this sink again, I'm gonna push. The whole idea is to understand that like you're controlling the weight the weight's not controlling you and you're becoming a part of the weight in the sense that I'm understanding I'm locking it on my body and now I'm moving. And that's gonna mean, fucking revelation, you're probably gonna have to go lighter because it's you'll probably get to the point where you're strong enough to do heavier weights than you're doing now and do that under, understanding catching on muscle and locking into your body and, and understanding. But when you first start doing it, it's gonna to be tough, because a lot of you guys and girls out there are, to say you're uncomfortable in the negative is an understatement of the year. You don't know what the negative is. 
you literally spend a millisecond in your negative and fire that fucking thing out to the top. Bring it down slow. Bring it down slow as you want. It doesn't fucking matter. Like, that's, that's another issue is like people lock on here, say they do everything right, and they press out here. They understand, I need to go slow on the way down. I need to control my negative. So they over, over emphasize their negative and are like this. And then they reach this lowest part they can, freak out. It's like, freak out. It's like, just get to the bottom of the negative. So understand you can control like that, but you're probably going a little more speed. So you're more elastic in your movement. So if I'm gonna, my negative would be about this fast on this and then fire. Fire. But I'm letting the weight sit, then I'm moving back. I'm not going here going boom and firing out, right? So it's just understanding your tempo and getting very comfortable in your negative in the most disadvantaged position, like we said before. So if you can control there and you can be strong there, your development of, of your physique will go through the roof. Because you're under one, you're able to maximally stretch your muscle in the range that you're trying to work through and you're able to stay there. So this time under tension thing isn't how fast and how much we can go. It's how long can you hold the fucking tension on your body. So whether you're stopped and holding at the bottom or whether you're pressing through ranges, this is all time under tension because at the bottom, I'm not sitting on the stack relaxed. I am here because we're demonstrating saving your shoulder, but most people will still be in the stretch position so this is still tension. Me holding two dumbbells here, or me holding this hammer strength here, or a barbell in this position is tension. It's maximal tension. This is the least amount of tension I'll have when I'm out here. Everything's locked. I'm in a position to power, my weight's back. The least amount of tension is here. Every inch I drop into that negative is tension. And then I'm pressing out through that tension, right? So if I can hold and maintain the deepest part of my tension or the stretch, do you understand how much stronger you will be, how much more development you're gonna get? Because you're working the muscle through the whole range and being able to control every part of that range. Not like coming down and going ah, ah. It's like come here, relax, push up. Relax, push up. It's the same with legs. Guys who rush out of the bottom of leg presses, girls who rush out of the bottom of squats, that's not the point. You're A to being it again. It's like, I just gotta get this weight up and down and my legs will magically grow. It's like, no, they're not. They're not at all. You, there's people in this gym, I've been in tons of gyms in my entire life. I've seen guys come in and do their leg days, fucking wrapping up their fucking legs, wrapping up their legs, unhooking like five, six plates on the Smith machine, going down, stand up, their legs as big as my forearm. So what does that tell you? And you see another guy squatting three plates clean, just sitting at the bottom, moving full range of motion, control, controlling on his muscle, legs like this. You know what I mean? So you have to ask yourself, like, again, you're lifting with your ego and you just want to be able to tell people, because like not everyone's going to have a fucking fantastic physique. I'm not Mr. Fucking Olympia. I'm not Chris Bumstead. I'm not like these top, top guys. I never was, never will be. But like you can have the best physique you can have, but it's gonna take you understanding that like, it's not gonna happen just because you do heavier weights. So if you understand that your physique is not as optimal, like I understand I'm not Mr. Olympia. I don't have the physique of Jay Cutler or, or, or Ronnie Coleman. I don't compensate for that by saying I'm stronger than them. And then all of a sudden, because I'm stronger than them, now I got something to hang my hat on. It's like, no, you're a fucking dork. Like you're, you're immature and you're a fucking dork and just lift the way you should lift to develop your muscles maximally, your structure the best way you can, and go from there. Like, be happy with who you are and don't start hanging your hat on like, yeah, well, fucking, the most I've ever seen J squat is five plates aside. I do six horribly <laughs> and almost break my back and like, I have a herniated disc now, but I did fucking six plates, like no problem. But three guys, one guy underneath me, two guys on the sides, knee wraps, wrist wraps, it's just like, that's what these guys do though. And I used to be guilty of that too. The reason why I can talk shit about that is because I've been all these people, guys. I've n I'm not above people. I just woke up. Like I literally woke up and understood like, what the fuck are you doing? 
Because yeah, I was stronger than a lot of people who were, in, who were pros like me, but did I look like them? No, not even fucking close. So what was I doing? What was the missing thing? It was like, oh, they're not lifting as much as I am. They're not hurt as often as I am. Their body's not as fucked up as mine is. They're not stressing their body so much. I understood, hey, maybe it's just the way I'm doing things that's off. And as soon as I started to understand like I'm, the way I'm moving and how I'm trapping things, I started with my legs and understanding like how to hit my quad better. Lowering the weight, lowering my feet, for me, worked better. And I was able to get more knee flexion and fire out and stretch my quad. And I was like, okay, well, why don't I adopt this philosophy to everything? Because I don't need to barbell row five plates. If you can do it, no problem. And it's like, you're, that's your strength level. Do it. Like Dorian Yates can fucking bend over and squeeze back four plates on a barbell row, no problem. Because he's conditioned himself to do that. He's very good at that lift. But don't think like, because I want to look like so-and-so and they do this, I need to get to the weights they're doing and then I'll magically become them. Wrong. You're so lost. But like people will be like, yeah, it's true, man. And they'll write in my comments. But you know you're doing it still. Like you're still doing it. It's like a fucking disease out there, man. Like, get over it. The only person you're competing with in the gym, guys and girls, is yourself. No one else gives a fuck. Like, so be the best you can be, stay injury free, lift intelligently, learn how to hit your muscles properly, and just keep developing. And whatever comes of that, comes of it. It's like for me to stand here and like, I'm competing in a show next week or whatever, and then this guy over here training, he's doing it too. We're completely different people. One, we might not even be the same race, so we're definitely different people. And it's like, this guy could be five foot four, I'm six foot one. It's like, I can't, you can't compare those things. Either they're gonna like the way he looks, or they're gonna like the way you look. But either way, you just gotta keep getting better, right? If he beats you, or this guy beats you, or that guy beats you, you just have to keep improving your physique the way it can be. So don't look at the five foot four guy who's packed with muscle and, and jacked and can like squat six plates like it's a fucking, walk in the park and you're six foot thinking, oh, I need to squat six plates so I can look like him. It's gonna be a rough day, man. Like maybe just understand like you need to move in different movement patterns to get your legs to blow up. Maybe understand that your pressing maybe needs to be less. You need to understand your depth more because you're such so long armed as a bigger individual, you're not getting as much depth. So you're getting very shallow chest development, right? But it's just these guys aren't looking at things objectively. They're just like, it's just this like, mentality of like this, like we said before, this push-pull shit. It's like, I fucking can't tell you how much that fucking term bothers me. It's dumbing down bodybuilding to just what we said is lifting. You're not lifting weights, man. Me lifting up this 45 pound plate and putting it back is technically lifting weights, right? But I'm not doing anything, nothing's happening. The idea of trapping again, the chest, the legs, the back, it's on tricep as well, right? So. If I'm gonna trap into tricep, a lot of people will just get this thing down and they'll hold here and then they'll, they'll push down. So they're only concerned about the fact that they get sensation here. So they, when they get a sensation in my triceps, it must be working. But if you're doing a tricep press down right, very rarely should you ever extend fully. I don't know why I would. Because again, like we said, if there's tension here now, the way I prescribe triceps, so I lock into lat, I lean my weight onto my hands. If there's tension here now, because my arm is folded, my triceps stretched maximally, if I press down through here, less tension, because I'm locked out on shoulder, and I'm pushing down, lean, my weight is leaning on my hands, so I have very little tension here. But I feel my tricep flexing. So I want to work in this range, where my tricep is constantly under tension. So if I pull down here and I catch, this is where I start from. I rock up, down. It's not here and, and get shorter and shorter up every time. The idea is to get this fluid motion where I'm trapping here, my elbow's rocking up, I'm pushing down through my palm. So my weight is down on my hands. I have leverage on this, on this machine. I can even do the stack if I'm strong enough, just pressing down here. So the idea is to fold, hold that tension there, roll out from that fold of my arm, and extend. But in order to do that, I have to be able to trap here and set. I can't have my shoulders out here. It'll never fucking happen. You have to get your shoulder in your body and your chest in front of your shoulder. So 
There's other ways to do it where we put our elbows out in front and we slam down in front and we rock on tricep. That's another way to hit tricep. But if you're trying to go for like maximal power on a press down and maximal fiber recruitment, we're gonna be here. And I'm gonna be leaning with arms tucked in, shoulders down and driving my weight down through my palm. So settle here, press. Settle, press. I'm leaning my weight into my hands, squeezing. I'm not getting up here going. Like this, I, like people think that time under tension means how fast can I do reps? Once I get the weight off, how fast can I go? And like put the fucking thing down. You have a very misguided view of what tension is. Because that's like, if we're trying to lengthen the time of tension, you're basically, if I can extend a set by keeping tension on my muscle rocking and controlling, I can extend a set this long. Yours is about this long. Because we're put the thing down. And we're probably in that range that we're working, we're probably recruiting like this much. Right? Whereas I want to be under tension the whole time, and feeling my muscle work the whole time. If that ends up being eight reps, six reps, five reps, who gives a fuck what it is? That's what it is, right? We'd rather have good sets where we're feeling shit than doing sets just for the sake of doing sets, right? It's like, oh, I do six sets of, six sets of tricep extensions for a total running time of 22 seconds over six sets. It's like if I can extend a set, if I can extend a set like almost a minute and keep that tension on my tricep and just keep rocking till, it, till like my form starts failing, when my reps are just getting too short, I just drop the weight, right? That's the goal. When body, like, so when people write me like, Mike, tell us your rep ranges and set ranges, no fucking clue. Not a fucking clue. Even if I give someone a number to aim for on a high rep set, whether it be legs or something like that, say 20 reps, I'm counting, but I'm not. Like, I'm gonna be close to 20, but I'm gonna look at you. Like, if you're shitting the bed around 14 reps, we're not going to grind out six more crap reps. It's like maybe grind out two more and then put it down, go up again, 15 to 20 in there. It's like it has to be a very like innate thing. You can't just like arbitrarily tell people eight reps on this, put it down, take a break. Why? It's like these programs, they don't, they're nonsense. Everybody, everyone needs structure in their mind. They can't, you can't have ambiguity in bodybuilding. It's like no one's under, everyone's understood that like guys back in the day trained very intuitively. Like guys like Arnold and Franco Colombo or like could be like Dorian or any of these Jay, even Jay, like they did sets, they had like ideas in their mind. Like I have an idea in my mind what I'd like to get accomplished today or what I think I can get on this given set. But if I don't get there or things are falling apart, I'm not gonna keep pushing the issue. I'm gonna pull back, take a break, maybe drop the weight a bit, play with it. Like, I'm trying to fill up my muscle with blood. I'm trying to engorge myself with blood and get that body part full as hell. It doesn't require me, like, it's no formula that I follow. Like, if you follow this formula, by the end, huge chest. It's like, no, it's complete nonsense. And everyone who subscribes to that, I get it because people need structure. You're, you're conditioned to that from the time you're a baby to the, you're an adult. From like going to school, this is your structure. This is your structure at home. This is how you get ahead. This is how you pass the test. This is how you get a job. There's formulas for stuff, right? But like when it comes to the gym, all that shit's out the window. And you can point to all these studies. This study shows that if I, if I increase my weight every, by this percentage every week, I'll get stronger. Guess what guys? I don't fucking care about being stronger. Like groundbreaking. I'm not a body, I'm not a power lifter. I don't care. It's not about what I'm doing. If I get stronger, I get stronger. Obviously, I'm stronger than I was when I was 15 years old starting out. I also control weight better than then. I also understand tension better than then. So I'm always evolving. But to like come in and say, oh, this this week is my whatever cycle, and I have to do this much. I have to deload and do this and this and this. People start talking that I just gloss over. I'm like. Like you're speaking Japanese to me. I don't understand what you're saying. I speak English, so I, I'm lost what you're talking about, right? And the people that are saying this don't look like shit. Like they're not massively muscled human beings. Like here and there there is people because those people have just stuck to that structure and gone with it. They're genetically like very gifted 
work hard and that's what's worked for them. But that's not to say if they had followed another way, they wouldn't look the exact same or maybe even better. The structure didn't get you there. You got you there by doing the work, right? If you need structure to like help you with that, that's your, how your mind works, then do that. My mind doesn't work like that. So, and, you sh and don't knock people who don't have like, oh, you don't have, a sh you don't have a program, blah, blah, blah. Like people write me daily. Do you have a program? Are you gonna come up with a program? Nope. If I ever come up with anything, it'll just be like an instructional tip thing while you're training to cue you for the exercise you're doing. But it won't be like, oh, get eight reps on this. Good job today, fucking Chris or whoever you are. You could, easily you could. No, I could put out some fucking dog shit, fucking bullshit, cookie cutter nonsense and, and I'm sure people would buy it, but it's just not in me. I can't do it. I don't bullshit people. And I'm like, I won't get behind anything I don't believe in. You don't see me promoting much on this channel. I don't promote much because I don't believe in much. So when I find something I like, I'll talk about it. When I find something I want to do that passes on to other people and helps them, I'll pass it on. I've yet to find it. And I've yet to find anyone with a platform that'll, that's allowing me, that's going to allow me to train people or help people the way I want to help them on a mass scale, like on, to be able to monetize that. Other than all of them are the same. You can have check-in posts with your clients and tell them, good job today. Send them a motivational message. Like, fuck off. <laughs> you need that shit. I don't want to deal with you. Like, you need, you need a person on a, on a screen to motivate you? Go fucking ride Peloton. Fucking, what are we talking about? Like, people that are in the gym and want to be in the gym do not need motivation to be there. I want people that would be there regardless who are looking for a little help with something and just put them on the right path. They might be going here, let's veer you a little left and get you on a smoother path to your goal, right? It's not about like, oh, everyone's got to train the way Mike trains and the way I train triceps is the only way to train. Train whoever the fuck you want. Do whatever style you want. Follow whatever bullshit fucking program you want that some fucking dick somewhere else gave to you, doesn't, had never met you in his life, never even seen you train. You send him videos of like certain exercises you do and he's like, yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, he doesn't know dick about training. He can't tell you like, oh, you're fucking, this is fucked up. You're starting your movement here. You're not, you're not pulling right. You're doing this. Just like, looks good. That's a deadlift. Yeah. Picking the bar up off the ground and standing up is technically a deadlift. Did you do it well though? Did you fucking drive from your hips? Did you fucking have the right grip on the bar? Did you have the right head position? Did you have the right chest position? But they're just like, yeah, man, deadlift your life away and fucking uh, then go do, some, go do some flat bench. I see that you're doing it completely fucked up, but you're still doing the three sets of eight I told you to do, so shit's bound to happen. But yeah, it's bound to happen. They're both bound to overdevelop in certain areas and underdevelop and fucking cause themselves issues in their shoulders or whatever it might be. And you caused that because you didn't correct it. It has nothing to do with what you're doing, guys. It's how you're doing it. I can't stress that enough in everything I do. It's how you do shit. And then the what comes. Once you know how to do things properly, then we can start getting fancy with how you're doing things. We can start at, like adding in this exercise or adding in this superset or understanding that we're trying to hit low lat, let's really hammer low lat with like a low dumbbell row and then let's do it with like a, a high pull down really low into the lats. Like, you can start thinking in these dynamic ways, right? But until you have like the basics down, don't start talking to people about mesocycles and fucking this and that and deloads. You don't know anything. That's like you, you play pickup basketball with your friends and then you think you're gonna go play for the Lakers and, and know how to run their defensive schemes, their offensive patterns, like how they're doing stuff. You have no idea. It's not basketball anymore to you, it's fucking science. And you're like standing over here because you don't understand, you just understand dribbling a ball. These guys, under, they're, they're not even thinking about dribbling the ball. They see the court, they throw the ball, they move, they move around. Like that stuff is subconscious to them at that point. So they're able to do these like crazy things. Shooting a ball is nothing to them. It's the same shit they've always done. You're still thinking about shooting the ball and dribbling the ball. And you're trying to make, you're trying to make yourself like the level of LeBron James or Michael Jordan. Chill out, man. Learn the basics. <laughs>